Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wellness Wednesdays with Stephanie podcast. I'm so excited to have this conversation today. I'm introducing you to Corey Diener. Now, Corey and I have been connected for a couple years now, and we actually met at a networking meeting for women. And I was just so inspired by her that I wanted to collaborate. And we've done several things together so far. I'm so excited to introduce her to you today. So, Corey, would you mind giving us a little introduction of what you're up to and how you're creating magic in the world? Ooh, I like it. Yeah. Well, hello. And thank you so much, Stephanie, for having me today. I am Corey. And currently, I have a couple businesses. One is real estate, which all of this actually does tie into. But my passion project is my metaphysical business called iRock Metaphysics. And I am currently deep diving into so many topics, including hermeticism, Kabbalah, tarot, astrology. And I even did a recent spiritual initiation with my school that was completely through all of Egypt. And it was incredible. So there's a lot of growth happening lately. That is so exciting. I cannot wait to dive in. So we talked about the topic today as being a journey of awakening to spirituality and the connections between our internal nature and external nature. And I love what you mentioned about just this is relevant to everyone's journey. So can you expand on that concept a little bit? Yeah, I truly believe that we all are just kind of asleep to the spiritual nature of our beingness. And as that blanket slowly gets peeled off of us, we start to see how literally everything inside of us is reflected outside of us, whether it be in the plants, in the clouds, in the weather, in the stars, it's all just so connected. And once we become aware of that, we start actually creating from a place of authenticity in our spiritual nature rather than fear or shame or blame or guilt and it's just so empowering that is beautiful so I'm curious about hermeticism I've seen a lot on YouTube about this concept so I'd love to give our audience a little definition first like what is hermeticism and then maybe dive into how has it affected your spiritual journey Oh my gosh. Yeah. Hermeticism. It is basically by definition, the study of theology that when you look at the repeating patterns throughout all religions, so there is a man or being spiritual being called Hermes Trismegistus. And there's myths that you can watch him show up in different religious texts or religious philosophies throughout the world and as you look at one and you see that reflection in the other and reflection in the other you start to become more aware of the actual whole nature of the entire universe rather than being like this is Christianity this is Mormonism this is Judaism this is Hermeticism it's all connected and when you watch those stories and see like just for instance, the myth of Osiris and how he was resurrected. And then you turn to Christianity, there was Jesus and he was resurrected. So the study of Hermeticism is looking at the connection between all religions instead of just one. That's beautiful. I would say that that is so relevant to my own journey. I have, um, I've studied the world religions and I settled on Buddhism as a life practice, but not really a religion, because I'm not a really re a religious person. I'm more of a spiritual person. I don't really practice any kind of, I don't go to church. I don't practice those kind of things, but I do see the connection between all the different religions. And so like, I just didn't have a name for it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. And just while we're on this subject, I want to touch on the difference between worshiping and practicing. Mm -hmm. because in a lot of religions they're taught to worship a god and cherish this outside being and there's a big difference between 
worshiping something outside of you and taking it inside of you and practicing it in your everyday nature. So I, like you, I study all of these philosophies, but I would consider myself maybe one of the most non-religious religious people ever because I'm not, I don't practice or worship anything that is like for an angel or a God or specific. It's all to help transform myself. That makes sense. I, I mean, I totally believe that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. I also believe in reincarnation and that I've been here for thousands of years, you know, so that kind of colors how I move in the world, you know, because I see those things as truth. And I believe that this is just part of my journey. I've been here before. I'm doing this again because I chose to be here. <laughs> so, yeah. oh man, um, I can see that we're going to get get deep here. Um, <laughs> so how has the Kabbalah influenced your spiritual journey? Yeah. So Kabbalah is a form of Judaism and it practices the tree of life and the tree of life actually in, in the Kabbalistic scheme will lay out the entire bodily nature in this spherical form and through each of the spheres there's paths that you can take and the beautiful thing about Kabbalah is this is what ties in the four elements for us so that's the air fire water earth and all that really entails all of those combinations that can be made within them and it also brings in astrology, theurgy, alchemy, and tarot. So that's really the connection between my hermetic Kabbalah studies and how astrology and tarot kind of got brought into it. Wow. So I'd love to hear about your astrology journey. Um, that was one of the first things we connected about is that you do astrology readings and I've had a reading. I loved it. Um, I think that um, astrology can give us perspective, you know, because I don't take, I, I always take everything with a grain of salt. I, when I read something or I listen to something that there's always potential that they are not quite right, or maybe not exactly on point, but that's okay. Because the information that we share as healers is new information sometimes. It's coming from spirit. Sometimes it's, you know, relevant information that won't make sense for another 10 years. Sometimes it's information to help you heal from a past trauma and it won't be relevant in 10 years. You know, so it's super interesting how we move through our life and how we reflect these things into our life. So getting back to astrology, how <laughs> has your astrology journey, like why did you discover astrology or why do you think astrology became something you became passionate about? Yeah, I've always been drawn to it. I've always known that there was some kind of truth, even as I grew up and people tried to make fun of me and tell me that it was just silly and why would you look at your horoscope, which... I do agree to some extent that a horoscope column, it's not going to be able to bring forth any sort of real, true, activating information. What is beautiful about regular horoscopes is there may be one or two lines that ring as true, which you can run away with and actually learn something from. I discovered my astrological signature back in 2020. And as I started unpacking that, it became very clear to me why things had worked out in my life the way that they had, and how I can possibly use that to benefit my life in the future. And nice. with that self-awareness, I was just able to express myself in such new ways, feel confident in myself, and stop playing the victim. It really, that was the biggest thing is the victim mentality that I was, that was so innately beat into my brain from ages like, I don't know, one to 27. 
dropping that has changed my entire reality. And that is why I'm so passionate about sharing astrology with others so that they can stop being a victim of their life and start being the creator. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, so can you give our audience an example of how your life shifted when you dropped that victim mindset? Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, so many, the, the victim mentality, it was all of this is happening to me and how am I ever going to get out? And no one wants to help me and no one's here for me. And realizing that when you have a friendship, I'm just going to use my friendships for reference because I was somebody early on in life where I didn't have a lot of close, close friends. And after I dropped this, I was able to form some of the most deepest friendships I've ever had. Because instead of believing that like my friends were supported or supposed to be responsible for my well-being, my emotions, um, making sure, saying I have food on the table. It was very much of a, they're supposed to do this. And if they're not doing this to me, they're hurting me and I'm the victim. Mm -hmm. Instead, it became so much more of what can I do for them? And how can I support them? And how can I send them a text message every day that will support them? And as I started dropping that victim mindset and started leaning into how I can help others and how I can really be such a support to my friendships, in turn, that all came back to me. And I had never felt more supported, loved in my entire life. That's beautiful. And gives, honestly, if anybody is still living in that victim mindset, a very good reason to drop it. <laughs> so um, let's talk a little bit about tarot. So you mentioned that uh, the Kabbalah brought in astrology and tarot. Um, how do you use tarot in your day-to-day -day life? Personally, I use tarot as a divinatory practice every morning for myself. I will pull cards about the events of the day just to give me some kind of reference as to what energies could come up. And that way, as they do, because as much as I'd like to say when I get a bad reading, like, oh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> it does. And the cards do know. And leaning into my ability of how I can work with it rather than playing the victim again. Mm -hmm. it's, it's empowering to know the energies that could be surrounding you. And it's not all the energies, right? But it's the most significant ones that you'll notice in a day. And being able to work with those on a more conscious level, I find very empowering. Nice, nice. Uh, so do you offer tarot readings in your uh, IROC? metaphysics I metaphysics um <laughs> yes I do uh tarot readings are some of my favorite to do because it's it's oddly very simple for me compared to an astrology reading whereas I'm doing like eight to ten hours of research and a whole sure. like 10 page write-up on that versus tarot is kind of like I'm just there to sit down with this awesome person and see what the cards have in store and I love it because every time we are both wowed by the, mm -hmm. the combinations that come up. I and totally agree. <laughs> yeah, it's able to really ascertain the energies right now um, versus mm -hmm. astrology is very much on a much grander scale. Not to mention tarot is very flexible. Mm -hmm. It is not fixed in stone. Every tarot message that comes forward can be shifted just by simply making a different decision. Mm -hmm. versus astrology your natal chart and that positioning of those planets when you were born is never going to change in your life so right but it's your life path in yeah, this life much more totally. yeah that's interesting okay so uh you talked about your spiritual initiation through egypt i'd love to hear about this experience because um so this was a recent journey yeah Yes. Um, so I started a little bit of 
backstory, I started all of this studying with a school out of LA called 22 Teachings back in March of 2020 when the world kind of went a little crazy. And that, that was my silver lining to it all. They walked me through this whole spiritual path and really kind of initiated me to it, completely doing it by myself at my home. And they dropped the little nugget of an Egypt trip in late 2020. And I was like, I, I want to go. I don't know how I'm going to go, but I want to go. And I manifested the money and the opportunities. So I met all of these incredible magicians and spiritual seekers on a plane to Egypt, where we all got to 40 of us magical seekers in temples and rooms doing the same rituals that I do in my living room by myself. It um, it shifted me on a whole nother level, as you can probably imagine. Yeah. Well, I mean, and honestly, I I think we met after that trip. No, it was a little bit before. I think was it really? That, yeah, we met like April or April, May of last year, I think. And then it was December, but we did, I did have the wellness event that you did, which was about mm-hmm. two or three weeks before I was departing for my journey. Oh, okay. Okay. Got it. Wonderful. Um, so give me some of the highlights of that trip. What do you remember the most that had the biggest impact? One thing that had a huge impact, which is odd because it wasn't in a temple or anywhere specifically sacred, um, was on our orientation night that I had a flashback to March of 2020 when I was so low, so lost. And I had just learned, gone to one of the classes and learned the Kabbalistic cross. I had no idea what I was doing. I don't know. I just decided to stand up in my living room and do the Kabbalistic cross by myself. And it felt really good. And I kind of started crying then. Flashback to two years later when I am standing in a hotel in Egypt in a conference room with all of these incredible people and we're standing up and doing the same ritual and just the the awareness of when you take one step when you make just like one tiny decision to change the way you do something of how that really snowballs and affects your entire life. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, it's so beautiful. (laughs) I love it. Oh, it was a lot. It's really incredible how each of us can change anything one day and it can change everything. Change your, changes your whole life path, right? That's powerful. Wow. Okay. Well, are there any other days? Um, So how long were you in Egypt? Uh, 18. 18 days. So were there any other like really powerful experiences while you were there? Yes. Our school technically being a religious organization, we had special access into a lot of the temples to be able to do ritual. And at the Hawthorne Temple in Dendera, we were able to do ritual in the birthing chamber that is right in front of the Grand Temple. And that is where all of the commoners and women of that age would come to give birth or if they would need a fertility ritual or things like that being in that space you was one place where you could really feel the electricity pumping through you I don't know if anyone is familiar with the infamous light bulbs of Egypt the hieroglyphic light bulbs where it's it's kind of these little people and they're holding up these huge light bulbs, um, that hieroglyph is actually in one of the underground rooms. I think they're called crypts. 
Mm -hmm. one of the crypts underneath the Dendera temple and being able to go inside there and see that. I mean, you were buzzing the entire time. Then we were actually granted permission to go up on the ceiling of the temple and dance under the moonlight with our, I forgot what they were, oh, sistrums. Sistrum is, is an ancient Egypt musical tool that really just like awoken and shook up all the energy and helped shift it. And we got to dance for like 15 minutes on the roof of this temple, just shaking the systems and listening to all of the music and seeing Venus right above us. It was incredible. Wow. Yeah, that sounds amazing. <laughs> Um, so I will definitely share the school, the link to the school in the description. So if anybody wants to participate in what you have participated in, they can find that. Um, now, is there anything else you want to share about that experience in Egypt? I mean, there's a lot. I would just encourage anyone, if you have any call to Egypt or call to that ancient sites to visit them in some spiritual capacity, not as a tourist, but try to visit them in a, in a very spiritual nature. There's several groups that do trips and initiations. I'm happy also to share the link with you for the um, upcoming December initiations that the Academy of the Oracle Arts is hosting as well. That's actually a sister school to 22 teachings. So I'll give you okay. both those links. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, and do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our listeners? Um, I feel like there's so much. <laughs> Well, get on your soapbox, Corey. Let us know what you're thinking. <laughs> I really want to touch on astrology a little bit more. Um, the actual metaphysical part of it and how it actually is a part of you and how unique you are. Because like you said, how some of the astrological advice may be accurate or not accurate that's totally fair because astrologers, we can't really predict the future. All we can say is this planetary alignment is happening in the future. And these are some things that you could look out for based on the past. Um, back to really each person's astrological signature. This is something that isn't just made up in the stars because we are spiritual beings that get called down to earth and get incarnated into this physical body. That physical body is tied to a vibration on this planet. And that vibration comes when we took our first breath in our physical body. That vibration then gets encoded into every part of our being. So as we go on our lives, that vibration that we have innately is never going to change. It's how we work with the new vibrations as the planet continues to move. Not to mention how every single one of us, we have zodiacal signatures that are so unique because each alignment won't be in exactly the same way for each 2,500 years. So think of like 2,500 years. Arizona has only been a state for maybe like a hundred years, I think. <laughs> so 2,500 years, how unique we really are. And that astrological signature colors everything that kind of flows into your life. And I think that becoming aware of that is possibly one of the biggest superpowers aside from understanding your nature as a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have any thoughts on astrology that you. <laughs> well, I haven't studied astrology. I've, um, you know, like you, I was always attracted to reading my, my um, astrological sign. And I was born on the cusp of Libra and Scorpio. So I've always read both the horoscope for Libra and the horoscope for 
Scorpio because I felt like sometimes there was relevant information in the Libra one, sometimes it was relevant information in the Scorpio one. Um, and it wasn't until I sat down with an astrologer who said, no, you're a Libra. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I get it. And honestly, ever since acknowledging that I am in fact a Libra, I resonate so much more with the concepts of the Libra energy, <laughs> you know, like I understand it. And I understand that my life path has been very much related to my father, who was also Libra. There were, there are similarities there and it's important. These are relevant similarities, not because he was not just because he was my dad, but because my lifetime, I needed this information for the challenges and experiences that I've set forth in my life. I needed the information. So it's, it is like a superpower. It's like you understand elements of your life that you maybe didn't have words for before, you know, mm -hmm. and it allows you to kind of see things from a, like a bird's eye view instead of the way that we like maneuver through life, living minute to minute and seeing just what it is instead of having this perspective, the higher perspective. Yeah. Yeah, it, totally. The, the connections between our parents and understanding their zodiacal signatures too. I really love how you tied that in because it's likely that you probably share some kind of a sign with one of your parents. And that is why there might be some triggers or some animosity. You might show a side of that sign that they've been kind of maybe like had in the shadows. Also, when you said the whole, like, I'm a Libra for sure, which, yeah, you are. If the sun is in Libra in your chart, then that's what's being illuminated. Mm -hmm. There is the whole wheel, right? So we all have all of the signs within you because I know you and I know you also carry a lot of Scorpio energy. Um, mm -hmm. because you're deep diving into spirituality and into the inner nature and inner working of our beingness that is still in you just because you are a Libra doesn't mean that that is something that got washed away or is not mm -hmm. accurate anymore um, it's just whatever signs that we have planets active in might be a little bit more at the forefront but we all have all of the aspects within us. So it didn't negate the fact that you related a lot to the Scorpio aspect. It just made you mm -hmm. more aware of the Libra. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think what's been happening as far as like my own spiritual journey, what's been happening is that I've been getting closer and cl closer to my authentic self and what my magic is and what I want to do in the world. I've um, just in the last like three years, I've had some powerful shifts and just like realizations awakening uh, this drive in me that I really, I really do have a powerful purpose on this planet. And I need to step into that power and like honor that power and I think that your astro astrological reading was part of that. <laughs> so thank you for that. But honestly, it's all been, I think, what we've all been experiencing in the last couple of years. I think that the pandemic forced us into an awakening. It forced us to look at things that we have not wanted to look at for centuries. Uh, yes, we were forced to surrender. Um, now is, is surrendering a super comfortable feeling, Stephanie? No, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. So you could probably understand why if we're able to just go to work every day, go to a sporting event, hang out with some friends, why we're like surrendering, why would I do that? Yet <laughs> when we were actually forced to, it was like, whoa. Yep. Now yeah. we be it now we can you had the choice to either open your eyes or not and I do believe it is it is a choice that we 
subconsciously or consciously and ma are making on a daily basis of whether or not we want to see what's happening because nature is showing us in every single way of how we are connected yeah it's the opening of the eyes and you've done that <laughs> you've you've stepped into this whole new way of being and now you're channeling and putting it out there, starting this podcast to share other spiritual people. It's incredible. It's necessary. It's, um, <laughs> <clears throat> I started doing wellness Wednesdays with Stephanie during the pandemic because I felt like I had all of this wisdom about wellness that I wanted to share with the world. And I was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to start recording videos and sharing my wisdom and offering words that can help support people's healing journeys. And then I got into doing interviews and that was connecting to healing interviews. And just in the last year, I realized, wouldn't it be beautiful if I combined the concepts of Wellness Wednesdays with Stephanie and connecting to healing interviews and do my own conversations about healing as well as conversations with other healers about healing and bring it all together into one podcast. That sounds amazing. I want to do this. And so I set a goal to do this about a year ago. And it was just in the last six months that I was like, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have no choice. I have to do this. Wow. <laughs> so it, now it's like, I have no choice. Um, so I have been working toward this for quite a long time. And I'm so excited to be at this point where I'm actually recording these and getting them out in the world. So thank you, Corey. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it's beautiful. I think it's, it's necessary, like you said, right now. And I think demolishing the taboo that has been built around channelers or psychics, because we all get intuitive pings every single day, Definitely. every single day, whether you want to call them a psychic ping or you want to call them a channeled message. It's just semantics, but mm -hmm. we all get them and some get them a lot more than others. And some really, really have the tools to not only step into their own channeling abilities and bring that to the forefront of their nature, but to be able to share that and do that for other people, I think is so powerful because not only are you bringing forth the message, but you're also showing them that it's possible. Yep. And that I think is what people really need to see nowadays. And if we look back at all these taboos, and all these bands and things that have been used to suppress the arts and spiritual natures, it would, there would have been no bands if these things weren't already so powerful in nature. It, it wouldn't have been a thing that they had to say, no, that's bad. They saw how powerful it was and they wanted to suppress it. So as you're mm -hmm. stepping into these things too, it's noticing and seeing, being able to recognize now, instead of looking at these psychics or whatnot as bad, you're being able to recognize them as your ancestors, as the mm -hmm. people who were creating this way for you to now really step into your true self and stand up and say, this is okay. And this is a part of our beingness. And we need to know about it in order to liberate ourselves from this controlling system. Yes. Oh my goodness. If that's not a final statement, I don't know what is beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> but I want to give you a chance. Is there any other thoughts, any other concepts you'd like to share? I think we've touched on a lot and there's a lot for anybody. If any run of any part of this rings true to you, or you're inspired by there's a whole wealth of knowledge that can be tapped into in any of these subjects. So I, I really think we did give a, a big overview for a lot of it. Excellent. Wonderful. Okay. Now, before you go, I would love for you to share your contact information. And if you'd like to share 
Um, details about your real estate business and how to contact that aspect of your business, as well as the IROC metaphysics business, you have at it. Um, and if you could spell out any of the email addresses or websites that you're going to share. So our listening audience can also write that down. Yeah, sure. So just a little bit as to how I tie this into my real estate stuff or how it has been tied into it is I no longer view the real estate transaction as simply a transaction. Things work when they're meant to work, um, especially because homes are such a big part of our life cycle. I view it as a much more of a spiritual experience than I ever did before. So I do tie in a lot of it and a lot of my clients when we're writing offers or things like that, I'll be pulling tarot cards and showing like, is this the house? Should you write an offer? Should you not? Is this going to work out? It, it's, it's a very fun experience to kind of incorporate this into the real estate side of that. That is so cool. How, how receptive are your customers? Actually, a lot of them have been really open to it surprisingly. Um, I will come in and do a house blessing when we close. I'll give them crystals. And it's really been shocking at how many people are like, wow, I love this. This is so cool. And I think that just goes to show of how our world is really awakening and is becoming a lot more accepting of these taboo-ish topics, which mm -hmm. we're squashing that. They're not taboo topics. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Okay. So how can we reach you in your real estate business? Yeah. So you can go to my website. It is landinthehouse.com. So that's L-A-N-D-I-N-T-H-E-H-O-U-S-E.com to view properties or start a home search on there. That's completely safe. Your information doesn't get sold to anybody. I get it and I will protect it. I promise. Then there is my Instagram for real estate, which is Corey dot in the house. So that's K O R I dot I N T H E H O U S E. And that's where I'll post a lot of my current listings or all of my contact information is also on there. So you can call me, reach out, send me an email. I'm always open to discussions about real estate. Um, then there's also the metaphysical side. Uh, the business is called IROC Metaphysics, and that's actually my first name spelled backwards. So it's I-R-O-K and then Metaphysics. I think you can spell that. <laughs> um, that's on Instagram, Facebook. Um, also, my website is irocmetaphysics.com if you're interested in booking any readings. Um, one thing I do offer is 15 minute sessions for anyone who is curious about a reading, but is not sure which one they might want to choose or engage with. Um, you can schedule a free 15 minute phone call through my website and we can discuss all of that and see what is actually going to be of most good for you at that time. Beautiful. Thank you, Corey. I cannot wait to share this with our community. Yeah, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for having me on and opening this conversation. It's been really, really fun. Definitely. Have a blessed day. You as well.